what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! In front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. My man, oops. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Holy fuck! How how are you? How you feel? I I mean, listen, I'm great. I'm. Uh, That's insane. That yesterday was a little. Yesterday was busy, bro. Yesterday was busy. It was uh, it was a long week. Fella tour. Sad to see it end, bud. Sad to see it end. But it's nice to uh, it's nice to be up in the altitude right now, sucking down some uh, some thin oxygen, and getting ready for uh, for a big week and catching up with you, fella. Yeah, I mean, it was impressive. Uh, you know, you parlayed it right into Vegas, and then you, you didn't even take, like, the Monday. Like, when I, when I texted you yesterday, and you're like, I'm on my way to LAX. I'm like, what? how? How is I'm, like, trying to, like, how is that possible? You're like, oh, I came back after the game, and then I went. You didn't even take the Monday just to, like, lay on the couch and whack off and fucking, you know, <laughs> get some soup. Or, like, you're just like, you're like, I got to get to, I got to get to Aspen was your thoughts, right? I mean, that's impressive. Yeah, you know what? Um I felt guilty, but by the end, I felt guilty, right? And, and guilt is usually a use, it's a useless emotion. You hear it over and over again, like just throw it out the window. But it was 12, I think 13 days in a row with, uh, with you and the, and the team and the fella tour and three different cities. And you know what? I miss my kids. I miss my girl. I miss my dog. So I was like, it, it, I just had to get it together. So I got it together. I went to the airport early, um, you know, shout out to my boy, G money. Our boy Garrett for for sticking with us for the whole fella tour from Phoenix to Vegas, because I needed him, and without him, Obes, I was a lost uh, I was a lost newfie hanging around the desert way too long, bro, way too long. Yeah, it's impressive, fella. It's impressive. I I still think guilty or not, you should have taken that Monday just to kind of put the feet up. And then, <laughs> hey, I mean, I think Izzy and Beckham would have understood if you saw him on Tuesday, but hey. It's well, impressive. Listen, I, I got back. I, I got back from Vegas after the game at three forty-five in the morning, <laughs> and I unpacked and then packed and I went to LAX at ten fifteen. That is fucking insane to me. That, I, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't move for two days. Like I, I went. So we went Toronto. For, I'll give you my fellow tour update for the fellas out there. We went. When we go in Wednesday night, we had dinner, and then we went Thursday, Friday hard. Then I came back home. Took me three IVs to get me to Scottsdale. Then I took Monday, Tuesday off in Scottsdale, and then I went Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I got home Saturday. Shout out to Todd Pickup, what a team guy! I got on his bird, thank God. And up dog, I, I didn't move for a day and a half. Soup, uh, electrolytes, <laughs> um, you know, you name it. And I, I was, and finally, I'm yesterday afternoon after a nice walk and a swim and got my life back in order. I was officially back. But I, 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 I'm just impressed by how quickly you could just. I guess that's what makes you you, fella. Yeah, but buddy, I appreciate it. I uh, the vote of confidence on you know just keeping the fella tour going for us, you know, for missing curfew for the brand, you know, for the fellows out there who uh, you know would just do anything to be in this position that we're in. You know, I I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to take the sprinter van from the waste management open with our boy Mac L. I had to get to Vegas, uh, and then I had to just send it and send it a, is exactly what I did. I might have slept five hours there i mean it was uh, and that was probably more hours than than anyone got to sleep in vegas because it was going off bro. i can't believe you haven't got sick do you think you're gonna get sick at all or no you think you're past sick. it i mean i had a cough yeah, no, I, I, I had a cough that I, just, I take my vitamins i do the life force bro i do the saunas the plunge you know a couple cold showers to wake up in the morning yeah. and then you just gotta let it rock bro you, you just you can't hold back so you're going to hold back. They're going to start throwing dirt on you. You're, you just keep her going. You're past the getting sick part. I, I'm going to say you're not past her just yet. What is it today? Tu <laughs> what is it here? Tuesday? I'm going to check in with you Thursday and see if, uh, if see if, I, I think you got a couple days here of when your bodies are finally going to maybe just, but who knows with you, fella? Who knows with you? But anyways, Updog was definitely first star of the fella tour. Uh, Co-first stars was DraftKings. Uh, the sports book in TPC Scottsdale is National League belong National League. I just hope to God, up dog, that the state of California that we live in can eventually please just vote yes on this so we can build a DraftKings sports book in Newport Beach somewhere because I saw the highlights of people watching the game there on Sunday. I was jealous. What a setup they have there. These sports books are next level. 
Yeah, I would love nothing more, brother, than to take in a nice Sunday football with games all day or a Saturday college football with the hockey going on to, um, listen, those screens, the places to play your bets, um, the food, the drinks. I mean, the backyard with it had all the nice seats and everything, the umbrellas. We needed the umbrellas. It was pouring rain. Piss poor weather at the WMO. But listen, no, you're right. These things are going to start popping up. Um, I think it's part of their brand, right? Pop these things up all around the country in the areas where you're allowed to gamble near the sports arenas. Like I picture Philadelphia with one. I picture near, De you know, in Detroit, we saw the DraftKings Sports and Social, but I picture a sports book going right next to that hockey arena, that area down there. Um, you know, in Canada, let's pop them up in Edmonton, all over the place. Let's let's get these going. It was a, it was a great time. Thanks for them for hosting us. I mean, just good thing we didn't we didn't hang out in the back for uh, uh, for what's his name, Afrojack, not Afrojack. Steve, Who was that guy? Steve talking? Aoki. Steve Aoki. That girl, I mean, that girl that came in and hugged you, I was like, get her out of here. She's still trying to get she's still trying to get cake out of her butt crack. There's cake in her butt crack <laughs> still, bro. She had the icing was was cake literally and fig like caked on her, man. I was like, you, I gotta take a picture with you. That's unbelievable. And listen, over the course of the fellow tour in Scottsdale, I'm not sure who it was that told me, but for people out there that are like, you know, gambling this, gambling that, you know, myself, ah, I put a little bit too much money on games sometimes. The average bet at DraftKings, what do you think the average bet at DraftKings is? Five bucks. Four dollars. Four bucks. Yeah, so what I'm saying is... Tickle, it's called tickling. Yeah, it just makes it a little bit more fun. And the thing about DraftKings is with all these cool prop bets, even loops... Loops, we, we got the we got loops on the DraftKings app before uh, the Super Bowl, and, and he was like sending me all these prop bets that he's like, look at this bet, look at this bet. I mean, the thing about DraftKings and when it is legalized is that you can just tickle it. You don't have to fucking bet above your, you know, your weight class. And there's so much fun shit you can do that makes the game way more entertaining. Yeah, no, absolutely. And but by the way, those screens in that sports book, all the you know, just seeing it and scrolling down through it and just, you know, putting a bunch into your open wagers, right? And then just going through and, and going five bucks, ten bucks. It just keeps you involved in the game. And, you know, when we had our when we had Johnny on, you know, one of the uh, one of the guys from DraftKings who was an incredible interview last week, he just described how much fun it is for his team to create these prop bets, right? To get to just separate ourselves and ourselves separate DraftKings from the competition with you know with the way the app works and with how fun these bets are and it's just nice to I like watching the game always with a little bit of cheddar on it just makes it that much more interesting fellow yeah I, I should my, my average bet is definitely about four bucks but that's neither here nor there eh, up dog um shout out to the Thunderbirds uh Darcy Hornachuk uh your boy Dodge um James Beal is an absolute beauty Thunderbird guy took good care of us but all those guys up dogs they must have been liking that weather deep down a little bit with all those with the, with the outfits they have to wear. But once again, they they, they knocked it out of the park. And and you talk about guys that can go full up dog. Those Thunderbirds go full up dog. I mean, Obi, that that weekend was it was you know the weather made it yeah uh, insanely unpredictable, right? Of just what the day was going to be like. I mean, for the people that went there underdressed, shitty. <laughs> you know, if you went there without an umbrella Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yikes. Um, but the course. You know, it held up. It was a great event. The Thunderbirds, you know, from from Dirk Spentley in the Bird's Nest to Kygo playing a, a show Saturday night there. Uh, the entertainment value and, you know, just the, the atmosphere, right? The atmosphere on 17 at that new cove that they have. Or 16, which is, you know, where Billy Quinn had his, had his squad from Dallas in there. Um, it's just a great event. And for all the, for all the players out there who, who might, you know, say it's, it's unclassy or it's, it's a little bit of a shit show and gong show. I just think like you would have never cut it in any other sport. Like it's just, there's no way you would have never been, you know, a football player or a hockey player, or even, you know, getting heckled as a baseball player, stepping up in the, you know, in the batter's box. I mean, it's just what sports is all about. It's just nice to see one event where you can just get as shit, as shit faced as possible. Uh, you know, you're probably going to end up on TV if you slide down a hill or you jump in a bunker or you, you get thrown in the old clinker. You're going to have to explain that to your wife when you get home. Honey, I'm sorry, but the boys, you know, was, I, they made me do it. I don't know what to tell you. But I mean, if, great if, event. If that's, all you, if that's all you got to explain to your wife after the waste management, then it's not a bad <laughs> it, it could be worse. could be worse than just say I got thrown in the junk tank. She's probably like, is that all you did? What else did you do? Uh, I'm with you, though. Listen, Zach Johnson, 
you know what? You got your fucking, you got the wheels beat off you at the Ryder Cup in Rome. If you didn't think you were going to go play in the waste management and that these <laughs> these drunk beauties were not going to chirp you for getting your ass kicked in the in the, in the the Ryder Cup, why play in the tournament? I heard him say, I've been playing this for 21 years. It's been over the line for every year I've played in it. Well, then why do you continue to play in it, Zach? Don't take the fucking week off. You know, I know he used to love playing the John Deere, which I don't think is there anymore. But like, I'm just saying, I was like, I, I used to like Zach Johnson. And after I saw that, I know he's getting up there. He's probably crusty. He's almost ready for the Champions Tour. But but don't play. If you can't handle the chirping, don't play in this tournament because that's what makes this tournament so unique. And it's never changing. The one thing I didn't like is they shut down beer sales on Saturday. I never thought I'd see the day. I mean, I <laughs> there must have been some really, really drunk people for them to shut that down. Yeah, there were some rumors going around Vegas that that happened, you know, in the casino and then the next day at the Super Bowl. People weren't happy, right? They're, like, comparing it, you know, they're like, what the hell is going on? It's a golf tournament. Yeah. You know, it's, it's cold out there. You know, and, we, and, and, and what the hell? I mean, for us, I, they didn't shut that down Thursday night, OB, till what time? I mean, we kept that going till about 7, 8 o'clock. Yeah. I mean, how drunk do you have to be to shut down beer sales, like, early afternoon? I, I mean... I saw one clip on, on one of the on one of the social media apps where this guy obviously the wet conditions didn't help, but he was pinned and he went face first in a mud puddle. And then he got up and he went back down again. Then he slid down the hill. I mean, I just think the wet conditions probably didn't help either with people like I'm saying flipping and flopping all over the place. But I just never thought I'd see the day they shut down the beer on the Saturday. Uh, you got to let her go, Buck Diddy. Yeah, uh, I, I mean. But you and me saw one guy get carried out by his buddy, and this guy was like not a small guy either, right? Like no. I, I guess at some point, you know, the 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 tournament organizers kind of look around at each other and go, these guys are just too drunk. Like it's, you know, if this was Thursday and it was only day one or two for these guys, maybe let's let them let's let them go a bit. But now day three, day four, these guys, it's amateur hour for them out there. They're they got their shirts off. They're probably you know peeing all over the place. It's like, come on, guys, a hey, touch, have a little touch here. Let's go have a yeah. touch. They, they must have. I just I never thought I'd see the day. Uh, but Zach Johnson and Billy Horschel, too. Calm down, Billy. You made enough money. I'm sure if one guy yells in your backswing, you, you can battle through it. So I would suggest those two guys maybe take next waste management off. But thanks to the Thunderbirds. Uh, and obviously, a uh, good Canadian lad, Nick Taylor. I was watching more of the golf than the Super Bowl. We'll get into the Super Bowl next because of how boring the start of the Super Bowl game was. But, dude, this guy's clutch. And I text Graham to let after, and I'm like, dude, this guy's money. He's like, anytime this guy got in contention – in college golf, in pro golf, he is so cash money up, dogs. Shout out to him. Good Winnipeg boy that lives in Scottsdale now, so it's a home game for him. But what a performance. What a what a finish, man. That that on 18, dude, what a scene. It looked insane, brother. I got to, I got a chance watching that in the sprint round on the way home, and it was like a shortened version. It was 11 and a half minutes of all Sunday highlights. And I mean the the way the course looked, Obi, and the final guys with Hoffman and Scheffler, and and the change in leads. There was like four or five guys, maybe even more, on the back nine that all had a chance at one point. They were tied for the lead, um, and that's what makes golf exciting. That's what makes golf exciting in in a, an event like that where you have 15, 16, 17, and 18 with thousands and thousands of people on it, all ready to, you know, to cheer and. You know, you, you have Scheffler, who's arguably the best player in the world right now in, in the PGA Tour, you know, almost making a hole in one on 16 to, to, you know, chase the lead again. And the lead changes and just the putts. And you're right about Nick Taylor, man. When he If he's in the hunt, heads up because he gets his putter going. I mean, imagine putting like that where, like, anything over between 10 to 30 feet is, like, you're just pouring them in. And they're the biggest putts of your life. I mean, our, you know, the winning the Canadian Open with that putt on 18, um, you know, last year was insane. But this year, I mean, that's the event to win. That's the event that fans will be member, you know, member they will remember you for because it's uh, it's a party, man. It's a party. I mean, listen, if you look at his last two wins, the scene at the Canadian Open last July was absolutely insane. I, I told you it made me feel proud to be a Canadian again. And then that scene. Uh, on Sunday, I mean, this Nick Nick Taylor, when he wins, he wins big. And he'll be on the President's Cup team this September in Montreal, which is huge for Mike Weir, who I believe is the captain. But this guy's cash money. So I, I reached out to Granville. I was like, see if you can get him on the pod. But he's like, ah, playing Riviera this week, $20 million up for grabs. He's not doing much media. I'm like, understood, fella, understood. So uh, DraftKings, thank you again. We will be there back there next year at that beautiful sports book. Hopefully the weather's a little nicer, though, because – 
The outfits, eh? When the weather's nicer, the outfits are a little, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I don't uh, think all those guys are going there for just the golf, right? So, no. Yeah, let's get that weather turned Let's get that around. weather maybe we turned. It into Mar- maybe we bump it up to April or something like that. We'll see. Super Bowl up, dog. You were in attendance. Um, I mean, how was it? How, how was it to be live at a Super Bowl game? I mean, the start of the game, I thought it was going to go down as the worst Super Bowl in the history of all 50 Super Bowls or whatever. It's been 58 of them. Uh, how'd you like it? Uh, buddy, it was insane, Obes. Uh, I'll get it a little bit yeah, in depth on my experience in Vegas over, uh, you know, Uppy's world. But listen, it was, uh, it, it was an event for the ages, man. From the people who showed up there to the venue, uh, that football stadium, Ob, is is as state of the art as anything that's ever been built to watch a game at. Um, what I did notice, bro, live at a football game, which I don't really see. You know, I've been to football games before. I could probably count them on my own hand, but. These guys felt like they were going to war, brother. It, it like seeing it live and all you know, you see all the routes run, you see the the hits and the and the tackles just up close and personal. We had great seats. It was insane. The energy was great. The halftime show I thought was great. Um, the beers were flowing. I was having the tequila sodas, brother. It was good. But I was a little disappointed, man. I thought the 49ers had a chance to, uh, I, you know, I, t- I lost the bottle of Camus to you, but I thought the 49ers had a chance to close it out. You know, blocked block field goal. I blocked extra point at the end. It saved my line, mind you, but um, it gave me a chance to hit it at a minus two. But, yeah, what do you say? I mean, Patrick Mahomes is is chasing, you know, he's chasing the 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 GOAT, right? People are now talking that he is – He's as good as uh, as anyone's ever been, and we had arguably the goat on our podcast last week with John. He Elway was there. To talk, he was there to talk. He was there. Fuck he, yeah, he was out on the field. He handed out the right? fucking trophy right up. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I this know. is. I was like, this is gonna sting John a little bit. He hates the Kansas City Chiefs, right? He's a Broncos guy. He was going for the Niners, and then he had to bring the trophy right up on their tape. But he was looking good. He was looking good, Johnny boy. He, he was looking sharp, and I'm sure it wasn't. Uh, I'm sure there was a couple late nights mixed in for Johnny down the stretch in Vegas, as was everybody's. Not as late as yours. Um, <laughs> it was, buddy. It was just awesome. I, I didn't want it to end. And when it went to overtime, I had my, I had our boy Sheldon Malitsky beside me, my boy. And, I mean, we were just, like, looking at each other, like, could this be any better to be here live at arguably one of the best Super Bowl finishes on planet Earth for for ages, right? People will be talking about this game for ages. And, yeah, it could have been, um, be- been better if you had the Chiefs. Could have been better if you took the fucking Chiefs. The Chiefs. <laughs> I, I did not want to take the Chiefs. Well, you're pumping up. You yeah, the Niners, bro. Yeah, the Niners. I'll tell you when I felt my my best. Okay, I went up to see uh, to see my boy Jesse, who had a suite up top. It was it was so badass. Shout out to him and Clay for having me up there. But listen, when they put Taylor Swift on the TV obes and she chugged that drink with her friend, there was a there was way more booze than there was cheers, and that actually made me. Gave me a little chub. I was, I was, I was happy that that went down, because you know what? I was just sick of it at the time. I'll tell you but, what. Talking about the halftime show, fuck, yeah. that 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 usher can high step around, can he? Holy he sure can. Holy he fuck, sure was, can. was he tiptoeing around there? And then listen, Alicia Keys. I've always loved Alicia Keys, and when she had that tight red suit on, and and, and usher was behind her, giving her the old pelvic thrust. I was like, wow, I'm <laughs> jealous. But I, I mean, listen. I forgot. I mean, Usher was getting popular when we were kind of playing in the show, right? Like when we used to go to the clubs a lot and stuff. Usher was the man. Still looks great. I mean, for how old do you think he is? Is he is he like forty eight? I say Usher's mid forties. Yeah. I'd say he's probably like forty five. Um, and I saw I saw him in Vegas at MGM maybe two months ago, right? I was, buddy, when he puts those roller skates on and he starts high stepping around the thing and doing twirls and dancing, it's it's insane. Imagine doing that on skates. Ah, uh, he was. I mean, his dance he's got moves. bangers, bro. He's his, got some bangers, Obes. His right. dance moves were unbelievable. I thought he killed it. I thought it was a great. Uh, I thought it was a great halftime show. Listen, the, the game. It is what it is. I mean, the Niners had their chances to bury them. They didn't bury them. Kansas City's defense, like I said all fucking year, is nasty, and they were nasty when they had to be. And the Niners, up dog. I don't know if you remember we were talking about heading into the game. I'm like, the Niners D is due yeah. for a big game, and, and they showed up and played unbelievable. Kyle Shanahan. I, I think he's I, – I love his style on the sidelines. He wears six hats. I get what he's saying about the coin flip. Like, if they kick two field goals, then you get the third possession and all you need is a field goal. But you can't give Patty Mahomes four four downs. You, you can't let him know exactly what he has to do. 
And that drive that Patty Mahomes put together at the end of the game, I, I mean, what can you say? It was it was absolutely insane. Travis Kelsey, I've sat on this podcast all year and kind of kind of chirped him a little bit. Well, you know what up, dog? The fucking joke's on me because this guy is an absolute G. He's dating the he's dating the biggest girl in the game. He won the biggest fucking championship in American sports. He was in Vegas with the with the trophy and Taylor Swift. I mean, listen, this guy, he took the chirping all year. He didn't listen to it. Travis Kelsey proved me wrong, man. This guy is a gangster. Uh and, and think about think about him waking up today. Up dog. How good is his life right now? Like, how good is he feeling? Yeah, if that's a, if that's a question, Obes, I I just answer it by saying, this guy fucks. Yeah, he is. <laughs> you know what? The outfit he had on, the glasses, the party he threw after with Marshmallow at Excess. Uh, our boy Mac L went there. Um, it's a, you know what? I give him props, bro. He he's now holds the record for most what most touchdowns and most catches in in a in playoff history, NFL playoff history. He arguably has the best quarterback as his as his one A as his boy, but those two guys prove that they're just having fun. They're having fun and kicking everyone's ass when it matters. The coach Andy Reid, I mean, he's he's the guy you want to take and run that ship, right? He's he's proven that you know three and four, four Super Bowl appearances in five years. These guys, it, when is it going to stop? It's not. Know. It's not going to stop. Not. It might not. Like they had it off year obes and they just won the Super Bowl again. So it's right. like heads up, boys. Let's talk about how big of a G Travis Kelsey is. In the middle of an NFL football season, he wheeled the most famous chick in the planet, flew around, going to see her, getting her to fall in love with them, all while being the best, what is supposed to be the best tight end in the league, taking shit from everyone, meatheads like me, gets her to fall in love. She comes to every game. He turns it up come playoff time and then goes up on the stage and starts singing Viva Las Vegas. I mean, Travis Kelsey, bro, you are a beauty and a gangster. And all I could think about was with Jay-Z at the game. The one lyric in the song is, I got the hottest girl in the game wearing my chain. And there's Taylor Swift with an 87 chain around his neck. I'm just like, this Travis Kelsey is the man. So I'm sorry, fella. You are the man. <laughs> and by the way, she was looking good at that game. I can maybe see why, you know, she had that outfit she had on, the all black. She looked pretty good. Yeah, you know what? I, I think he might even make her a little hotter now that, you know, she's uh, she, she's the girl of a Super Bowl back-to-back -back champ. Travis Kelsey, arguably now, you, all girls are talking about him. Maybe they weren't before, right? Maybe they just didn't know who he was. I'm talking girls on all levels now. But Taylor Swift, yeah, you're right. Now that she's, like, sitting in behind the, behind the DJ booth at yeah. clubs, like, not really worrying about shit. Makes her a little bit more attractive. I, I, I still would say that Cam Mc, uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, I saw his girl Olivia Culpa at the Aria Hotel before she went to the game, and she had this outfit on, and I, I basically said, this girl's the hottest girl in the game right now. I want McCaffrey to win this game. But after that... Uh, it wasn't his fault. Tra tra I mean, he played, he played his guts out. I'll tell you what, Blake Lively looked pretty good up in that little suite, too. I've, I've always had a crush on Blake. But I did see something cool up before the game, and you have a beautiful daughter. Uh, you know, you're a girl dad. It was it was guys, it was dads around the country that literally their daughter only started watching football because of Taylor Swift. And these these dads were getting emotional that that I get to spend three hours with my daughter that I would not normally get to spend. And it was like five, six, seven to ten dads, at the, and they all getting emotional, crying at the end. And I'm like, well, fuck, that's pretty awesome. I mean, these girls yeah. literally just watch football for her, so. From that perspective, it's pretty touching as well. Yeah, I mean, we're we're, we're going to see the after effects of the of the Taylor Swift effect, right? Of moving forward, um, we've had. I mean, you're going to see viewership. This this I don't know. Did the did the ratings come out? We'd have to look that up. I'm sure Princey knows, but the ratings for the Super Bowl had to just crush it with all the celebs in town, with Las Vegas, the entertainment city of the world. That the viewership had to have been insane. And you're right. It's it's now it's kids, it's women, it's it's guys, it's it's everyone. Sundays are now full of uh, of different people watching, you know, football. And that's to you, it's great. To us, it's great. Somehow we got to get it to hockey. When's Jack Hughes going to grab, you know, one of the young stars and and turn all the other women into hockey fans now? Yeah, we we just need that kid to stay healthy, which we're going to get into. But all I got to say is Chiefs Kingdom. I mean, all they did was fuck me out of my future, but other than that, I, I rolled them in the playoffs. Listen, 
DraftKings, baby. I gave out two prop bets. Mahomes over 27 and a half rushing yards. You're welcome. 66 yards. And I took Mahomes as MVP, which was, if they were going to win, it was a lock. So I hit my two prop bets up, dog. And then I had the Chiefs in the game. So it was a good day for me laying on the couch. But last but not least on our little uh, intro here, Tiger is back. I saw him waking up this morning coming out of whatever hotel he stayed at in L.A. with his new Sunday red on. He's playing Riviera, $20 million on the line. It's great every time this guy teases up. I, I, I hope he's hope he's walking well. I hope he hits it decent enough because we both know how tough Riv is. Riv's tough, Holmes, but it's not a it's not a you know a hard walk, right? So it is a course. He's got his name on the tournament. It is a course that you know he's familiar with. He can go out. It's in his backyard. We know he's an LA guy. Um, he's dressed dressed to impress. Love the logo. I can't wait to see the the shape of it. Is it nice and tight? Like right? You oh yeah. Want to make it nah, he was looking good. Um, a big event, 20 million bucks. You're right. These guys are, this is one you got to step, step on the gas pedal for. Um, it's going to be great on TV. Are you going to go or are you, uh, what do you got? You got Billy no. in town this weekend no. for UFC. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to make it up there. No, I'll save that for, I uh, will save that for fellow Friday. Fellow uh, Friday. I, I got a big weekend coming up, but it's only Tuesday here, fellas. So we'll be right back. I'm missing curfew. Welcome back to missing curfew. Up is world. Party time. Vegas, baby. Into Aspen. Guy's a machine. Um, <laughs> dude, how was the Sprinter Ride van from Scottsdale to, uh, to to Vegas? Just talking about the city, I guess, and Sheldon. Where'd you guys go yeah. for dinner? How was it, buddy? How was it? Listen, it was awesome. But shout out to, I, I mentioned before, G Money, first fella tour. We had our driver, Garrett, on the road with us. I mean, this guy from picking us up bulbs to going to get beers to going to get all the groceries to making sure we were looked after at the end of our nights. Um, I just want to shout out to him and give him some love. But listen, Sprinter Ride Through the Desert, beautiful country, right in from Scottsdale right to Vegas, four, four hour ride. Uh, I stayed at Aria and shout out to our boy Jim Cantaloupe, who we haven't seen in some time. But Jimbo's fucking, he's back, man. What, what a guy. Um, he had a ton of his friends in town, clients, friends, a couple of his girlfriends. We did a huge dinner at Aria one night and then went over to uh, Omnia, which you've been in before. I have. And we sent it. We had a night. So loud in there. Uh, we had a night in there. Came back on the tables, did pretty well. Um, and then up early, buddy, for a little breakfast. And then we went over. We had a fucking huge, we call it the Green Machine, the Incredible Hulk, but a huge green limo with probably 30 of us in there. Uh, we all went over to the game. Uh, shout out to Jack Eichel who came by. Um, it was I mean, it was awesome. It was awesome. Was we, the city uh, the was the city like super busy or what? I mean, I was it busy, bro. Every, it was insane. Every fucking hot chick in the planet was there on my Instagram. I think literally everyone that I know or wanted to know or have known yeah. or might have known, yeah. they were all there. So I was yeah. just like, fuck. I mean, when you think about it, Vegas for the Super Bowl, right? Everyone's going to take that opportunity to get in there and just mix it, just mix yeah. it. I wonder how much money oh, yeah. the city made. The city, I mean, I don't know, but the rooms were crazy. Like. The, everything was just times 10 expensive rooms fucking limo rides minimum at tables what was it the was minimum nuts, right what was the minimum i probably 40 oh god wow yeah <laughs> oh yeah 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 now mind you we didn't put that on the missing curfew card so that's well good, i should but, fucking hope uh, not or what about but listen listen i'll tell you what i saw gwen stefani she looked good yeah i saw uh i walked past leo he was fucking had his hat. Was oh, Cons with him? Huh? Was no, Cons I didn't see Cons. Ah. I didn't see. Was Cons at the game? Uh, I didn't I, I didn't see it from his Instagram that he was there. No, he was probably takes a lot to get Cons. But I thought maybe the Super Bowl might get him there for a night. Yeah, no, it it didn't. But um, well, listen, we had a great crew, and it was all on Jimbo with that last minute invite. I was really, you know, I didn't plan on going to this, and you know that. But once in a lifetime experience, the fucking city was rocking, buddy. And you do talk about. Rockets. I think every rocket in the goddamn country, in the world, was there. Yeah, and uh, it didn't take more than just a head turn to find them all. Um, but you know, it was great. It was great. We uh, we had a blast. God, glad we came out alive. And uh, it's nice to be back with the family, fella, and now chatting with you. I Up his talk. world party time. Party time. Forty G's. Oh, you better not put that on the Mr. Curvy MX. That's all I can say, fella. Get this guy a beer. Presented by our good friends at Labatt. Presented by Labatt Blue Light. Lots of things are better together. Hockey, food, golf, hitting the club, going to Super Bowls. 
But if you really want to take things to the next level, drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and live life to the power of we. And always enjoy responsibly. Labatt Blue. I'm going to start right with my boy, Weezy Baby. I still think he should have made the All-Star game just because I wanted to see him in Toronto. 15 goals. He's leading the league in goals for defensemen. I watched him play last night against the Rangers. He was absolutely buzzing. 32 points, plus 13, but 15 goals up, dog. That is insane. Uh, Weegsy, baby, get yourself a blue light, fella, and keep on buzzing. That is insane. He's just sniping, bro. You got to love it. You got to love the Weegsy, baby. Uh, get this guy a beer. He's back, boys. He's back. Jonathan Huberto. Four, last four games, two goals, three apples. He's playing with Kuzimenko, who they just picked up, who's got also got two goals in four games. So shout out to Hubie. We, we put him on the milk cart not too long ago, but he's back. And uh, from the quotes from his boys on his squad, he's a different guy. He's walking around with a little swag. He's doing the peacock. So shout out to our boy Hubie and get that guy a blue light. You know, it's, it's good to see Hubie play well. Five points in his last, five, what did he have? He had five points in four games ever since Kuzmenko, Kuzmenko's got there. And Kuzmenko's a good player. I was sitting thinking like, you know, I'm glad to see Hubie doing well, but th there's one team, I guess this is, I could throw this into a rumor mill. If there's one team out there that I think Craig Conroy, and I'm not saying he wants to get rid of Hubie, Hubie but what about the Washington Capitals, right? Ovi's trying to get to beat Gretzky. Backstrom's probably done forever. Kuznetsov's back in, in the NHLPA program. I know Hubie's making $10 million. Calgary would have to take some of, the, some of that salary, but I think Hubie playing on the same line as Ovi, they kind of play at the same pace. I just think if there was one team out there, Cotty, if you're listening, that you might be able to, get, to bite. I'm not saying they want to trade him ups, but doesn't Washington seem like it could be a fit for Hubie? Go there, play with Ovi, help him break the record? Yeah, I mean, he does need just a sniper, right? He doesn't have that on his line. He doesn't have a guy that's opened up, right-hand shot. You know, the thing about Hubie, though, is you, you just need to – you need to just give him a little bit of patience, right? You got you got to be patient with him because eventually he's going to find his stride, but it's all about chemistry with him and the guys he's on the ice with. But I just don't know, man. It's It seems like you, you get two older guys on the same line that just skate the same same pace obes. It might not be perfect. They might just be a little too slow and, you know, matchups on the road might be tough. Who knows? But you talk, talk about power play. I mean, it would be a game changer for the Caps. Well, they're both too slow. It doesn't matter what team they play for. They're both Toilet too slow. Exactly, and, and, and they would they might get exposed, you know, being on the ice together. Well, anyways, Ovi's been on fire, so get this guy the bat blue. O Ovi, five goals in the last five games. He he broke the record for empty net goals, fifty-seven. That's a lot of empty netters. But Ovi's back scoring. Listen, I bumped into somebody at the sports book as well, who's a big times Caps fan ups, and he says Ovi's been playing with. Uh, a sports hernia or a torn or, or like something to do with the midsection. So listen, if Ovi's been battling through that, that would explain a lot because if you're playing with any kind of hernia or something in your stomach, you, you, you can't skate and he does look slower. So maybe he's getting healthy up dog. Maybe he's starting to get healthy and I hope he is because it's more fun when he's scoring, but get Ovi on the bat blue five goals in five games. Yeah. 60 back of Wayne's record right now. So we, we OB stays healthy. You're right. Is he 60 behind him? He is now 60 behind wow. minutes, yeah. That is crazy. That is crazy. That's nuts, right? Last but not least, your boy, Petro. Petro, 1,000 games. Shout it out. Man, it was a treat. Uh, they Saturday night in Vegas, they had a little thing for him. Um, it's special, man. Anytime you play 1,000 games. I, I probably played 300 games with Petro. He's he's a stud. Uh, got the Golden Knights stick. Got the Golden Stick from the Golden Knights. Uh, you know what? A quiet almost 600 points. So anytime you're a guy that plays a two-way game and you chip in with two Stanley Cups and almost 600 points on two squads, uh, it means you're doing something right. Um, Watch the game last night. You know, you had Bacchus. You had uh, Craig Berube. Um, you had some guys from the Blues. Just give them a shout-out. It was pretty special. But I think it might have been the first guy that, that's ever been on a Golden Knight that has been celebrated for a 1,000 games. So a, a nice honor for him as well for that. Yeah, it, it was. Um, man, Vegas has got to get healthy, though, huh? I mean, that lineup, I know Ike's is getting close, but Carrier's hurt again. Theodore's still out. 
you know, I, I just watched them play last night. I, t I took them. I still thought they'd find a way, and unfortunately they didn't. But that, that's a team that needs to get healthy and, and, and right now layups. Like, when you look at that team, yeah. they're missing some, some key, key guys. Yeah, yesterday was was a key thing too, right? That they're missing the key guys. They get penalty trouble. They can't rely on Aiden Hill all the time. It was, I mean, there was a couple five on threes back to back. But Aiden Hill, he is uh, he's back to the form. I you know I think he was at last year in that run. And um, if they can find a way to get healthy, you know they're bound to, to ba they're bound to bounce back and have and have a great finish in my opinion. So oh yeah, you still you still don't want to play them in the playoffs, especially if they get healthy. Absolutely, you know what I mean. Right now it would be ooh. Right now it would be Vegas, Edmonton, first round, Vegas home ice. Edmonton wants no. Yes. Edmonton wants no part of that, right? I, I, I think Edmonton's ready to rock and roll with anyone right now. You're, You're drinking like, the Kool Aid, Kansas eh? City Chiefs. We'll take you guys. I watched Edmonton play in Vegas. Now, mind you, it was the first game after the break. They lost two one. McDavid was absolutely flying. I mean, he could have had ten points, but he didn't. And the rest of the team, it kind of looked yeah. like it did last year in the playoffs. Vegas shut them down. Vegas grinded them down. They 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 tried to limit to McDavid to whatever they could. He still had a million chances. But up dog, it still had that feel of, uh oh, same old Oilers here. Come playoff time, yeah. can their depth guys help out? Because McDavid can only do so much. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. It's it's just. It what they've done in the last two months is just proved everyone wrong. I, at one point, I got a text from our boy Joe DeMarco and said, is plus like 2,200 good to bet on these Oilers to win the Cup? And I'm like, buddy, they're done. And look <laughs> what they've done. Since then, I thought they were done best too. Best team in the league. And, and, and yes, you're right. It's just two players. But it's working. Two players and a goalie are getting them there. So can they, you know, can they finally put it together come playoff time and get some secondary third and, and, and third scoring? Who knows? But. Right now, it would be Vancouver Canucks versus your former St. Louis Blues. That'd be a nice little interesting round one matchup. I mean, yeah, that'd be, be up that'd, there for it. Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Get this guy, Labatt Blue, up dog, missing curfew. Oh, 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 oh. Dog of the week. Listen, I watched this guy play earlier in the season. His name is Will Cooley. He's a 22 year old rookie, six foot three, 210 pounds. He's got nine goals, 16 points. Last night he scored a fucking just a just a Scotty Upshaw goal. Uh, Capo Caco takes it to the net, pulls it, shot on net. Marky's right there. Cooley beats this guy to the net, whacks at it once, whacks at it twice, bangs it in. He played unbelievable the whole night. Four checking, uh, going to the net, hitting guys, scrubbing guys up. Will Cooley, I absolutely love it, fella. That's why you're the missing curfew dog of the week. Uppy, it gives me hope. It gives me hope that there's still guys out there that play with a little bit of this and a little bit of balls because this kid plays the game the right way. Yeah, you're right. And uh, anytime you get under guy's skin, you go to the net like that, you're banging and whacking. You know, Markstrom's pissed off. You piss off other guys the way you play, you're doing something right. And uh, I did, you know, for a guy, young, six foot three, 210 pounder, he's playing hard, man. He's playing right. And you got to, you got to take advantage when you're like a New York Ranger, you're Toronto Maple Leaf, Montreal Canadian, Chicago Blackhawk, playing on these like original 16s, and you play hard, you play the right way. These fans will love you. You'll get recognized. You get put up on a, you put put on a plateau. And uh, this kid's doing all the right things. So, roof, roof, oh, look at the week. Oh, I'm gonna say something here to see if I can maybe rile up some Rangers fans here. I'm gonna say this Adams Fox. He's having a great year. He's got 39 points. He's plus six. 39 points in 43 games. He's got some slow boots, man. From a guy who had some slow boots, this guy, he has some slow boots. I watched him last night, and there was foot races where he got beat flat out. And I'm just saying, if this New York Rangers team, which I still watched them play last night, and with a guy like Peter Laviolette, like I thought he'd make them tighten it up, up dog. They're still making whole place. The bread man, I love him, but he's throwing cross-ice sauce here. There's a band of jets turning him over. I, I don't know. I, I haven't watched the Rangers enough. I'm going to watch them more down the stretch here. But I'm still concerned about their east-west plays. And I know Adam Fox is 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 a 10 times as offensive I was, but dude, up dog, watch him. He's got some slow boots, man. He's got some slow I boots. Know. I've seen it, but it's his puck handling that everyone's going to say, well, he, he puts up points because he, you know, he's just that much better the way he thinks. And he doesn't have to skate so fast because he's – uh, he, he reads the play, and he's just smarter than other guys. There's no secret. A any New York Ranger fan would tell you he's slow. 
Yeah? Like you think so? I hope so. He's effective. No. Just, just be out there more for goals for than goals against. Yeah, I know. Um, and then help win in the playoffs and no like Adam Barr. No, but he's supposed to be an elite defenseman. You know, yeah. uh, he, Kale McCarr, not even close. Quinn Hughes, not even close. I mean, is he not supposed to be in uh, – He's. He, I mean, he won the Norris a few years ago, the COVID year, I think it was. Like uh, like you said, I guess he's, he's a plus player. He's got 38 points. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But I'll tell you what, that Jacob Truba, is he not fun to watch? He almost put that Peltier from Calgary. He almost put him out of the league. I mean, it was such a clean hit. The guy's head was down. I love watching him play. But uh, Will Cooley, you were the dog of the week. Up dog around the National League, my man. Your boy Jack Hughes is back. Listen, this kid's got to stay healthy. He had one and one last night. He scored from the goal line. It was such a sick play off Joey DeCourt's head and in. But this kid's good for the game. We've talked over the years about you know, he's not the biggest guy ups and I, I'm, I'm still concerned about him getting hurt because we need him back. And for the New Jersey devils, they need him back, but this is a guy that's great for the league. We got to keep him healthy is what I'm saying. From a guy Obes, that, that was hurt early on in my career. I'm not comparing myself to Jack Hughes, but you know, the way he plays, he's so dynamic. He's so fast. We've seen Connor McDavid as a younger player skate so fast. And when you bring the pucks to the net and there's a chance someone takes your feet out and you hit that end wall, there's no saving you. I don't care if you're, you know, if, if you've got meat on your bones or you're built like muscle or you're tiny. When you go that fast and hit the wall, it's going to hurt you. Now, that was the that was the injury back in St. Louis for Jack Hughes. Right now, we don't know if if it's lingered for so long, but not having him in the All-Star game is terrible for the NHL. Not having him for the, you know, for the stretch is terrible. So it's nice to see him back. He's came back with with a mission. One, yeah, that goal you're talking about, that goal was incredible. But um, you know, he he's a guy. Just just you know, stay with it, stay controlled. Don't like you know, it's like he's playing on a joystick, man. Like he's yeah. so shifty and he's so he's incredible player that there's going to be times you just kind of got to slow it down a little bit and not put yourself in those vulnerable positions. But if he's healthy, NHL's better. New Jersey Devils will be back on track. There are four points out of the playoffs right now. Behind the Detroit Red Wings, there's rumors that they're trying to get Markstrom. And listen, the way Marky played, the way Marky's been playing, if the New Jersey Devils can get him, you may be going, you may be going to the Prudential Center for the Stanley Cup Finals in June. We may be, you know, maybe seeing Frosty with his playoff beard and his sick hair. Because if you can get a legit goalie like that in Jersey, and this kid can stay healthy, that they can't win with the goaltending they have right now. Ups, they're, they can't. They're not oh, going to win a Stanley Cup. I know, but the coaching staff and everyone, you're right. They, they haven't. They, I think this is a league's worst. Uh, we haven't seen this kind of save percentage amongst their two goalies in forever. You know, that Blackwood over in San Jose right now, they miss him. He's He's been good. Um, but you're right. That deal, that deal was on the table as of last week. And there's a lot of rumors to why it didn't work out. Some salary retention. You know, maybe the pieces just weren't in place. But you're right. Markstrom, add a goalie, save the season. You got Jack Hughes back. If he is healthy, if he's not too healthy, Obi, and they're just like, get in there and play, maybe it's not the year to bring in the goalie and, and risk it. But if he's healthy, you still have a chance. Jasper Brad, Timo Meyer, these guys, you want to, while you have these guys healthy playing together, you got to have a run. You got to have a goalie. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, this is, it's not now or never for them. They're, they're, they got their core guys locked up, they're, they're, their star players are young. I just think, listen, Marky's got a no move. He's got to wave it. I think he would he would wave it for New Jersey. Uh, it'd be a great fit for him, and they would be a scary, scary team up, dog. So, uh, speaking about American-born players, Billy Guerin is the GM of Team USA for the Four Nations Cup and moving on to the Olympics. I think that's a great, great, great pick for Team USA. I love Billy Guerin. Things aren't going exactly. You know, Minnesota played hard last night, man. I watched them play last night. I, I, I wouldn't say they're done just yet. I think he's going to be a great GM for Team USA. My question to you is, who is going to be the guy for Team Canada? The front runner is your boy Army, they're saying. But there's a guy here at Missing Curfew that we're liking, isn't there? Yeah, listen, uh, I wouldn't go anywhere else but a guy that's won Stanley, that's won Stanley Cups, captain them. He's He's been on the leadership committee for playing in the Olympics for Team Canada. He's wore the jersey. Um, to me, Steve Eiserman is the front runner for this, uh, Doug Armstrong, you know, he's been there before he's, he's a guy that's built, you know, Stanley cup winning team. But for me, captain Canada is Steve Eiserman. 
um, a guy that's that's battled, a guy that's put together, you know, uh, frameworked the Tampa Bay Lightning back in the day to their Stanley Cups, and now with uh, with a team like the Detroit Red Wings, a nice young team, up and coming team, well built, well well designed weapons. He's just the guy. I think these guys. Imagine getting a call from him mid season next year, like, hey, you're gonna you're gonna play on Team Canada. You know what that would mean? Getting a call from Steve Eiserman, telling him you're gonna play in that Four Nations Cup. That would be pretty special for some guys. I agree. I I think the head coach needs to be John Cooper, and maybe I'm biased because I love Coop, but he was supposed to be the coach before COVID hit. You know, I I know they don't have the same team that they used to. I love Paul Maurice. If if it's not John Cooper, maybe it's him. Um, but I just think it's got to be Coop. You know, he won his two Stanley Cups. They went to three finals. He never got his opportunity to be the guy. And if anyone can manage these these superstar guys that are making, you know, $13 million a year. I think it's John Cooper up. So, I mean, that guy is, you know, you know him. We've got to know him. He's chill. I think he'd be yeah. perfect for them. Listen, you have Coop, you have Paul Maurice, you have Rick Tockett. Oh, Tockett. You, ha you have all these, no, but you have all these guys that are players guys. They know the game. They, they, live, they live the game, right? They bleed it. They think it all day long. They're smart. Um, they're guys, guys. Paul Maurice, like you said, I mean, who wouldn't want to play for a guy like that? Talk. Talk brings the toughness, brings the attitude, brings that pedigree of, you know, fuck you. Yeah. And then Cooper is the, he's the leader. He's the one, he's the one saying, go here, go there. He's like the Warcraft, the guru. Um, I, I, I mean, between those three guys, that sounds like a pretty nice little squad right there for coaches. Yeah. You got to think Coop's bringing Toxin as an assistant hundred percent, right? hundred yeah. percent. What a coaching room that would be. Holy fuck! I hope they got a beer. Yeah, hope, a hope, hope they got a beer. Hope they got a beer line. fridge in there. Eh? Guarantee they got a beer <laughs> fridge in there. But uh, it's interesting, Uppy. Uh, we're gonna get some best on best next year, buddy. Uh, I can't wait to see who the name is GM of Canada. And like I said, Coop, he's got my vote. We'll be right back here at Missing Curfew, foul lot. Welcome back to Missing Curfew, Up Dog, my man. Physicality is something that me and you talk about weekly here at Missing Curfew. We both played physical. Let's start with the Brendan Dillon hit. I know it was last week, but we were on the fellow tour getting drunk. We didn't get a chance to talk about it. I like Nola Chari, but I think if you sat him down and said, fella, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> like his head was down. He's reaching for the puck. He put himself in a vulnerable position up, dog. Yeah. And if I'm Dylan and I'm that D-man, I'm stepping up too. I'm stepping up and drilling him. Uh, they gave him three games for it. What's your thought as a forward? I mean, I, I think Achari's got to take some responsibility there. I think Achari's just not used to carrying the puck up the ice that long, right? <laughs> He's kind of like a give-and-go yeah. type guy. You know, he gets the puck on a stick. He doesn't have it too long before he's either dumping it in or he's giving it to one of his guys or turning it over. No offense. I did it a lot. But um, you're right. His head got caught out in front of him. And whenever that happens, OB carrying the puck up the ice, whether you miss it, it's in your skates, and you put your head out there, of course, principal point of contact is your head. Brendan Dillon, we always talk about the lines. Protect the blue line, protect the red line. That's when you go hit, guys. You don't want him to gain that. And so, for me, I think that's a tough paycheck to lose for Brendan Dillon, a guy that plays hard, plays the same way every night. He's not going to not hit that guy. So when you're on the ice and you know Brendan Dillon's out there, be ready to get hit, and no one's getting suspended. I don't know. That's the way I feel. I, I, I've been crushed. I got smoked, and I also smoked a lot of guys. But I was also ready for those moments. And if I wasn't, it's on me. So, like, you know, I had this conversation, I think it was with, it was us talking with either Richie Golfin or we're, you know, we're sitting with, uh, it might have been Teddy Purcell at the W Waste Management Open just talking about the hit too. But it's like, come on. It's, it's hockey still, boys. We want, want this game to be physical. Look at the Super Bowl, how many fucking big hits were in the Super Bowl. It's like, you know, our game's physical, and it's beautiful for it. Yeah. Guy gets fucking smoked, fucking beat. Sometimes it's it's great that he gets smoked. It's a man's game out there, isn't it, Uppy? It's a man's game. Fella. It's Listen, nice. I thought it was a great clip, too. It's a great clip for everyone but Nola Chari. Because he's at his bucket fucking spinning through the air. <laughs> and, and, and Dylan's – I was like, what a great clip. And there's people out there, you know, and for some of the people on, on, on our social media, the Jake McCabe hit. Listen, you meat sticks. When a defenseman reverses it, as I reverse it, as soon as I reverse it, my job is to turn and now look this way. If I reverse it and continue to look this way, 
I deserve to get fucking drilled. And that's exactly what Jake McCabe did. He reversed it, won Mississippi, kept looking at it, and he got absolutely drilled. If you asked him deep down, was he admired his little reverse, he would say yes. It happened to me. Cam Barker got me in the playoffs. Fucking bucket this way, glove that way. The whole building was green because I was admired my little reverse to Mitchie. That one or one and a half seconds up being a little reverse, you can still get hit. I thought it was a great hit. Uh, and then last but not least here, Morgan Riley. Um, first of all, Remo's comments were unbelievable. Make hockey violent again. I text Smitty at Sauce. I'm like, make that t-shirt. We'll send a couple to Revo. Make hockey violent again. Uh, do you want to go first on this one? I mean, well, what are your yeah. thoughts? Sure, I, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Listen, the thing is, is when you go in with your stick and you cross-check, you, you're, you're putting your, your own self in, you know, in give up your paycheck fucking situation. Morgan Riley's a great player. Is he dirty? No. I think he was, fuck, he didn't have a penalty until two weeks ago. Yeah, I know. So, I know. no, I don't think He must have heard us talking he's... about him. Yeah, I don't think he's, uh, listen, I don't think he's fucking a dirty player by no means. Do I like to see emotion like that? Rivalry game, Ottawa, Toronto, guy fucking takes the slapper from fucking below the hashies on an empty netter to close out the game. Do I want fights after it? Yes. Would I have liked... Morgan Riley to drop his gloves and go grab him and 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 beat his ass down, just just because you got to be ready for that when you do it. That's the situation. It's kind of like the the Marshawn situation a couple of years ago in the playoffs, right? Where you go in with your stick rather than just punching a guy in the face. It's funny to say. Usually, you know, if you're an outsider looking at hockey, Obi, and you say you can just punch a guy in the face, and it's way better than you know just cross checking him. Yes, it is. It looks, you know, it it looks better from the outside looking in. Um, I think this in-person hearing means he's going to have a chance to explain himself. Like, maybe I didn't mean to get him in the head, but what the fuck is he doing taking a slap shot, embarrass, uh, embarrassing us like that, and then not engaging with me when he turns in the corner? Yeah. Like, if I took a slap shot on your fucking team, Obi, and you were my best buddy, you'd fucking come and cross-check me in the head. You would, oh, yeah. but I'd know you're there. I would turn around and be ready for it. I wouldn't just fucking start looking in the crowd. So well, that's kind of my take on you it. Might, right? you be might ready, have, and this isn't a situation. You never would have done that, but you might have been looking at the crowd for a couple broads. But I see that, maybe what's yeah. going on. But listen, listen, you're absolutely right. And I've been dying. I've been dying for the Battle of Ontario. It's never going to be what it was when Tux and Dolmy and Mats and Greener and Chris Neal on the other side, and Fisher, and Chris Phillips. It's never going to be what it was because it used to be the best thing in the world. Right? Guys were yeah. killing each other. And the Leafs always won the playoffs, which made me you know, happy as a Leafs guy. So first and foremost, if this can bring some passion back to the Battle of Alberta, thank God. Because sometimes when they play, I'm like, is this really two rivals? I haven't seen a goddamn hit out here. As for Morgan Riley, I love this kid. You're right, Uppy. We, were, we said we said he did have a penalty bit, you know, a couple months ago. Now, now he's got an in Pearson hearing. I love the passion. We need more of it, but you can't go in. You, you can't go in cross checking high. You should have just went in. What you should have done is just dropped your gloves right away. You just totally. dropped your gloves and started beating the piss out of them. You wouldn't have got suspended. Or I'll tell you what, Morgan. Next time, leave that glove on and just punch him as hard as you can right in the fucking nose, as hard as you <laughs> possibly can, and then give him a couple more on the ground. But as soon as you get the lumber up here above the neck, it sucks. But I, I love the passion. Don't cross-check him. Punch him in the nose next time. And this, this what's this kid's name? Ridley Gregg? Is this him? Just just put the puck in the net, fella. Well, what are you doing? I will I will like this up, dog. They asked Austin, they asked Austin Matthews, have you ever seen somebody take a slap shot into an empty net? He said, yeah, last week at the All-Star Skills game. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a great, great comment, but uh, I love it. I love the passion. I love what Sheldon Keefe said. I love what Revo said. Uh, hopefully the Battle of Alberta is back, but like you said, Updog Morgan, just keep that stick down. Just either absolutely go in and, sh and, and drop him and jump him, or like I said, that glove on Updog, you know, right in the nose. That hurts more than anything. Absolutely. That's well said. I'm, I'm glad that that's the take that all our listeners are going to enjoy to hear too, because I'm sure they all feel the same and, I mean, it's hockey, right? It should be violent. It should be fucking hard. It's a man's game. 
fucking do dumb shit, you're gonna get beat up. Make hockey violent again. That was unbelievable. Yeah. Rebo, this guy's like, I mean, his post game interviews this year have been gold. Tarp off. He's just you could tell up he he's to the point where he knows he's got two years left. And who knows what's going to happen. He's played a long, long time. Yeah, he still wants to win a Stanley Cup. But you can tell he just doesn't really give a fuck anymore, right? Like, he's going to say what he wants to say. You can tell he hates where the game is heading, much like all of us do. And if you're playing in the hockey mecca, they're going to put a microphone in front of your face. I, I learned in Vancouver, if they want to put a microphone in my face, I'm going to tell them how I feel. And I like how Revo's calling and how it is. I like that. Absolutely, man. It's it's those guys that uh, people tune in to watch. You yeah. never know what's going to come out of their mouth, but it's usually pretty damn good. Yeah, and you know the missing curfew hot seat. Uh, it's got to be getting hot for Sheldon Keith, doesn't it? I said a month ago, a month and a half ago, Brad. If you're listening, you should bring Craig Berube in. But I mean, what are they waiting for? Maybe just chalk it up to. Because listen, this hawk is not a very good team. They're a wild card team right now. And if you asked me, the Devils, the Islanders, they're coming as well. Like they're they're going to have to fight hard to get in the playoffs. You're up, dog. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and we need Toronto in. Yeah. It's escrow. These kids want Toronto in. Fans want Toronto in. I mean, you can't have the best goal scorer in the league not, you know, elevate his team's play. And and at some point, it is a coaching change. Look at what happened to the Oilers. I mean, just, the, you know, a front seat. And who got fired last week, by the way? We missed another I missed another bet. Todd, McC Todd McClellan. Todd McClellan, L.A., of course, next game, comes out, wins it. I think that's a fucking perfect 6-0. Yeah, I had the Oilers in that one. And by the way, that was another game I watched the Oilers play where it had a little bit of a playoff feel to it again, and a lot of guys didn't show up. So, I don't know. I, I, I want Connor McDavid to win one up, dog, and I want to see the fans of Edmonton get what they deserve. But I, it was a hell of a 16-game winning streak, but now it's time to get them back on track. But uh, up, dog, you the man. What's, what's going on in Aspen? Is there lots of snow up there? Are you hitting the slopes? Or are you having a nap? Or what the fuck are you doing today, bud? I don't know, man. I haven't seen our boy Lupul in some time, and uh, I'm sure he's going to want to grab a nice little man's lunch. But listen, I took Izzy to school here today, this morning, for the first time. She loves it. I walked in with my 99 uh, Gretzky's basement hat on, and the teacher was like, are you a hockey fan? And I said, a hockey fan? Yeah, I like hockey a little bit. She's <laughs> like, wow, I love that hat. Like, I'm a big Gretzky guy. And I said, so am I. And then, you know, I dropped Izzy off, and she said, my dad played hockey. Um, oh, and then anyway, and then I took Beckham to gymnastics, bro. He's just buzzing around the trampolines, getting on the on the tightrope. Um, so this is a full family day, but it's beautiful outside. There's not a ton of snow, but it is President's Day weekend coming up, and this is a good weekend to be around. Um, expecting a uh, expecting a big turnout. And shout out to our boy Noah. It's his birthday today. I'm here in his studio at Platform, but it's his birthday, so shout out to him. And uh, thanks for you know letting us do this. In his uh, in his office. Well, fella, I'll be talking to you on Fellow Friday. We can go over all the weekend stuff. Say hi to Loops for me. Uh, thank you to Morgan and Kyle here at Hall Pass Media. Up dog, you the man. That was missing curfew. Fellas. Fellas.